Is it too much? No. Hi there, I'm Anya from Peony and Time, and in today's video, we are going to be going over complete instructions from beginning to end to make this fisherman's rib scarf. Or this one. They're the same, it's just different colors. <laughs> All right, so recently I was contacted by Lion Brand Yarn, which was amazing. Um, <laughs> so they so kindly asked me if they could send me some yarn uh, so that I could make up a design. And so I decided to try something I've been wanting to try for a while, which is the Fisherman's Rib Stitch. So the Fisherman's Rib looks, you know, on the face of it, pretty similar to a regular rib, but you actually end up basically double stitching each of these stitches, and so it makes such a wonderful, like, dense, squishy, squishy fabric. It's so, so nice. And you can see when you get up close that it does look different from just, you know, your basic rib stitch. Um, it just has a lot of depth and texture to it, and is just, it's really squishy. <laughs> It's so nice and soft and kind of nicely heavy. Anyhow, so um, they sent me four colors. This one is called Peony and this one is called Time, which really just floored me. That was so fun. And then this is a really soft gray color, um, just kind of a beautiful icy gray and it's called um, Whisper. And, and then this, shoot, I think this was just called Cream. I don't know if I kept that. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll double check for sure on that. Anyhow, so I thought it would be fun to do um, just a really fun like color blocking scarf. So I have one color on the ends and then like a nice big middle section here of kind of, of the neutral. And then I did pom poms on each of the four corners with the middle neutral color. So I did it in two, um, so I did two different scarves so two different color combos, obviously. So this one, the pink on the, the peony, pink on the end, uh, cream in the middle, and then, and then these really fluffy cream pom poms. So I'm gonna go over how to do the fisherman's rib stitch and then how to use that to make your own scarf just like this. Yeah, and that's about it. All right, so the materials that you'll need for this project are four skeins of Lion Brand New Basic 175. This color is Whisper. And this color is Time. I know four skeins of yarn seems like an awful lot for a scarf project, but one of the wonderful things about the Fisherman's Rib Stitch is that it does create this really dense, thick fabric, and that's because you're basically knitting every stitch twice. And so, because you're double knitting everything, it does take more yardage than usual, but I really think that the results are worth it. Okay, next, I used size 10 needles. You can use circulars or straight. I use these because they're what I had on hand, and also I just really love knitting with circulars, but you will not be knitting this in the round, so whichever you have or prefer is fine. Tapestry needle, of course, for weaving in those ends. Uh, scissors, obviously. And then I use a perfect pom-pom maker for mine. Uh, you can also go the old-fashioned way and just use a piece of cardboard and wrap the yarn around it. These are just so easy and create such beautiful pom-poms. And then a cup of coffee. You don't actually need the coffee. I just really love coffee. All right, let's get started. So, got my size 10 needles. I have my yarn. I'm starting with the darker of the contrasting colors for this. With a fisherman's rib stitch, um, the number of stitches that you cast on just has to be in multiples of two plus three in order for the pattern to work. So I cast on 37 stitches for this design. If you want your scarf to be wider or narrower, you can totally do that. Just make sure, again, that you use a multiple of two and then add three. All right, so I'm gonna use my long tail cast on, my favorite stretchy cast on. If you don't know how to do a long tail cast on or you don't remember how, um, I will put a link below to my video tutorial on how to do a long tail cast on. All right, 37 stitches. Okay, 37 stitches, all right. So the first thing that we're going to do is a setup row. And for that, it's super easy. We just knit all the way across. All right. All 
All right, so we just finished our setup row, which was just knitting all the way across here. We turn it around to the wrong side. And the nice thing about the fisherman's rib pattern is that it is just um, a two row sequence. So just two rows that you'll have to learn that you'll just be repeating over and over again. So one thing I have learned about the fisherman's rib is that it is rather difficult to rip it out and redo a few rows if you have made a mistake or realize you've made a mistake a few rows back. So if you're worried about that, maybe especially in the beginning, it would maybe be good to knit with lifelines. Um, if you're not familiar with how to do that, um, I don't have a YouTube video on that right now, but if you look it up on YouTube, you'll be able to find some good tutorials. So if you don't want to use a lifeline, I would just say pay real close attention and be really OCD for the first good chunk of your scarf. The good news is that after you get a little ways into this, it's easy and you'll be able to do it in your sleep. Um, by the end, it really did become kind of a mindless knitting for me, which I really enjoy. So anyhow, so first row. Your first row in the fisherman rib sequence starts on the wrong side. And we are going to purl one, just like normal. And then here's where it gets fun. All right, so we're going to knit one. So I'm gonna put my yarn to the back, but we're gonna knit one into the stitch below. So here is where we would normally go to knit. Uh, we are going to go right into this hole of the stitch below. All right. And then just pull it right through there. And then we're gonna purl one. And then again, knit one right there into the stitch below. Let's see how that looks. Slip those both off. Purl one. Again, knit one into the stitch below. And then you're just gonna continue that all the way across this row. All right, then here we came to the last two stitches. So you're gonna knit one into the stitch below just like we've been doing. And then end on a purl one. And now you know 50% of the pattern. All right, so row two of this two row sequence, I'm just going to knit this end stitch and then now we're gonna start the pattern. So I'm going to knit one, just like normal, and then I'm going to knit one into this stitch below. And then knit one like normal. And then again, knit one into this stitch below. Alright, so I just knit one into this stitch below, and then I have two stitches left. I'm just going to knit both of those. And I will also write the instructions for these um, for these two rows in the description below. So if you want to have those written instructions that you can either copy down or just take a look at every once in a while, um, that will be there. All right, and then we're just gonna continue in this two row sequence, either until the skein is used up or until we feel like the color section is as long as we wanted. All right, so I went ahead and knitted this until I used up almost all of this skein here. There's just a little bit left. So I'm ready to switch over to this color. Cool, all right, got my end. And for the Fisherman's Rib, I like to um, do a color change on the row that starts with a purl. All right, so I'm gonna slip this through like I'm gonna knit just like normal. Put the yarn around slip it through and then I'm going to kind of carefully set that down for just a second. Grab the end here and tie it around the yarn that I was using previously. 
pulling it just tight enough that that's going to make um, a normal sized knit loop right there. You don't want it too tight so it puckers, but you also don't want it too loose that you have like a big sloppy stitch hanging off the end there. Okay, looks good. And then we will just go ahead and continue our knitting with this new beautiful gray color. So there you go, really nice clean transition. I'll trim this um, with leaving just enough so that you have enough to, um, to weave in the end really nicely after we're all done. And for this middle section, I have two skeins of yarn that I'm going to use for this. I'm going to use um, most of both of these, but I'm gonna leave about half a skein of this left over because I want to have plenty for pom-poms. All right, first row down and yeah, nice clean color change, hooray. And when you run out of one skein, add in the next one. So I knitted it until this middle gray section was just about 28 inches long, maybe like 28 and a half. And so now I'm going to switch back to the green color with my second skein of time. All right, so by now I am just about out of yarn and this scarf is getting super long all this nonsense um, and so I measured and and this big last chunk of color blocking is just about the same length as my first one so even though I have a little bit of yarn left I'm gonna go ahead and cast off and then I'm just gonna do a basic bind off and then just like all bind offs you want to make sure that it's not too tight because you don't want it to be like pulling in and kind of puckering your end you also don't want it to be too loose and just looking real sloppy after you've made this beautiful scarf so I'm binding off on the row that starts with the pearl and then I'm just going to knit in kind, just like I am doing a regular row in this pattern. All right, done with these guys. And <laughs> let's just trim this. All right, and then I'm just going to tie off this end here. And then I'm just gonna weave this end in. I'll just weave it back and forth through a few stitches just so that I feel confident that it's nice and secure. that just a little bit tight and allow that to pop back and disappear right into the work yay so it's all done with the knitting part so now I just get to go back find all the joins and weave in these ends as well Obviously for these guys, you're going to make sure that you weave the gray color up into the gray and the green down into the green. All right, so now that we are done weaving in all the ends, I'm going to take my leftover gray yarn and a medium sized pom pom maker and make four pom-poms, one for each of these scarf ends. 
it can be a little bit challenging to gauge. I tried to leave a good amount of yarn so that um, there will be enough for all four pom-poms, but just try to gauge as you're going to make sure that you're not using like making a super fatty pom-pom and then use it all up on your first, um, first two or three poms. <laughs> Cause that would be sad. All right, so now that you're done making all your pom-poms, you're gonna grab your tapestry needle again, grab your scarf, and then you're just going to attach one pom-pom to each of the four corners. So go ahead and grab your first one. Just pull it through like that, weave it back and forth a few times. And I'm going to put it back through the center of this pom-pom, if I can. <laughs> and then back through this way. It'll just be a really nice, strong attachment there. Back and forth a couple more times. Do a quick tie off and then bring those through one last time and trim them. And look! Oh, so cute! And then do the same thing on all the other corners. All right, there you go. Got a little pom-pom on each end. I just think it's so cute. <laughs> and that is it, guys. That is the whole scarf. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope the pattern was really clear and easy to understand. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a note in the comments below and I'll do my best to clarify. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the scarf pattern and if you make one, please find me on Instagram, Peony and Time, and tag me in your photos because I would love to see and I hope you enjoy the fisherman's rib as much as I did. Have a great week!